Welcome friends. Today I want to invite you to the transformative journey of creating a peaceful home through cleaning and decluttering. Together I want us to eradicate the chaos and take eight steps towards a peaceful home, embracing each moment with encouragement, motivation and a friendly spirit. I want you to get ready to let go of clutter, revive your space and discover the peace that awaits you. The first step is to purge. To create a peaceful home, start by purging. Clear away any rubbish, gather laundry on the washing machine and place dirty dishes in the sink. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Matthew 6.21 As we begin this cleaning routine, let us remember that our true treasure lies not in material possessions, but in the love and grace of our Saviour. Let go of the excess, discard what no longer serves a purpose and create space for what truly matters. As we go through this first step of homemaking tasks for the day and purging, it can be so helpful to pray for discernment as we pick up items, as we shuffle around each room, because this first step really is key to what's coming later and getting it right will truly help for all the remaining tasks. Consider praying for discernment about what is necessary and what is not. Dear Lord, help me detach from the things that weigh me down. Grant me the wisdom to discern what is necessary and what is not. Guide my hands as I purge and may my heart be filled with gratitude for all that you have provided. I choose to let go of the unnecessary and embrace simplicity. My home will reflect the peace that comes from trusting in God's provision. In Matthew 6, 19 through 21, Jesus also reminds us, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Take a moment to reflect on the things that clutter your home and your heart. Release the attachment to material possessions and seek treasures that bring eternal joy. Let us pray for the strength to let go of what no longer serves us, embracing simplicity. Step number two is to grab your trusty eventual basket. Next, establish an eventual basket. This will serve as a temporary home for items that need to be put away elsewhere in the house. Ecclesiastes 3 1 teaches us there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. As we go through our homes, we encounter items that are not immediately essential but may have value later. Place them in the eventual basket for future consideration. Let us remember that it's okay to let go of the pressure to make immediate decisions. Trust in God's timing and pray for wisdom when revisiting these items. Everyday items also often end up all over the house in our home and in every room we have things that do not belong there and that adds to the clutter and the feeling of stress and decision fatigue when trying to find what we are looking for. Having a basket ready to serve just to put those items in that do not belong in the room to sort through later will be so helpful. Step number three is to attack the order. Attack the order by returning bigger items to their proper places in each room. Put back chairs that have been moved, arrange blankets and restore furniture to its original position. 1 Corinthians 14.40 guides us that everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Now that we've got rid of all the excess, let's tackle the remaining items with intentionality. Create systems and restore order to our homes as we do this. Let us reflect on the order God desires for our lives. 
Pray for discipline, discernment, and a heart that seeks His above all. This is also a great opportunity to rearrange any furniture that you've been meaning to or move around and spark some new life into your rooms. Creating order in our homes can bring peace to our minds and souls. So attack the order with determination and purpose. Tackle one area at a time knowing that God is a God of order, not chaos. If you want a prayer, consider praying, Lord, grant me the strength and discipline to attack the disorder in my home. Help me prioritize and create a peaceful environment where me and my family can thrive. Guide my steps as I bring order to each room and may your peace reign in my heart. I will attack the order in my home with purpose and determination. Each step towards order brings me closer to a peaceful sanctuary. Step number four is to clear flat surfaces. This, this is probably the game changer for most homes when it comes to creating a peaceful environment. Our surfaces can get so cluttered easily. And when I talk about flat surfaces, I don't just mean your tables, your window sills, your counters, but also your floors. Psalm 51.10 reminds us, Create in me a pure heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Clearing flat surfaces like countertops, tables and desks create space for peace and productivity. As we remove the physical clutter, let us also reflect on our hearts. Pray for God to remove any emotional or spiritual clutter that hinders our ability to be fully present and focus on His plan for us. Here, I would like to invite you to pray. Dear Lord, as I clear the flat surfaces in my home, I ask for your guidance. Help me prioritize and find a place for everything. May each cleared surface be a reminder of your order and bring peace to my home. Today. I will clear the flat surfaces in my home as I create space. I invite peace to fill every corner of my home. Step number five is to erase the dirt. Erase the dirt by thoroughly cleaning your home. Vacuum the floors, mop any necessary areas and wipe down all surfaces to bring a sense of cleanliness. Psalm 51, 2, 3 says, Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Cleaning the dirt and grime from our homes mirrors the cleansing power of God's forgiveness in our lives. As we scrub away the physical dirt, let us invite God to cleanse our hearts from any sinful habits or attitudes. Pray for forgiveness, repentance, and a fresh start in His grace. A fresh start that is always, always there. Have you ever noticed as you begin a task like wiping surfaces, polishing a mirror, you get so focused that your mind also stills and sort of cleanses with it. I often find that worrying is something that I'm very prone to in every moment and it's only when I clean that I tend to just forget my current worries. In honesty, aren't always much to be worried about. However, when I clean, it not only refreshes my physical space, but it also seemed to cleanse my mind. That stillness that I find from focusing on these small habits or small motions, that stillness is hard to find when doing any other task. I guess it's mindless tasks. It also opens me up for opportunities to slow down, to feel gratitude, to Think about things that matter, more so with a grateful heart. 
you might have noticed by now that I still find opportunities to pray. I think it's in these more mindless tasks that they are kind of the key opportunities for me to pray throughout the day. Otherwise, I do honestly struggle to find the time. So here I'd like to pray. Heavenly Father, as I erase the dirt from my home, I ask for your cleansing touch. Purify my heart and renew my spirit as I clean. May the physical act of cleaning become a spiritual practice, drawing me closer to you. Today, I will erase the dirt from my home with a grateful heart. As I clean, I invite God's renewal into every aspect of my life. Step number six is to fill the sink. Place all dirty dishes into the sink to tackle them later is what we kind of started with. But as you go about cleaning, you may find a few things that you have missed. Like a cup behind the curtain on the windowsill that you didn't get to. It's time to put those into the sink and now you can fill it up and do the dishes. If you have a dishwasher, run through that cycle. If you're like me and you wash by hand, this is the time to just wash and leave it to dry as we move through the next few steps. Proverbs 11.25 reminds us, A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Filling the sink with soapy water symbolizes our willingness to serve others, especially as homemakers. As we clean our dishes, let us pray for opportunities to extend love, kindness and hospitality to those around us. Ask God to fill our hearts in turn with a spirit of generosity and compassion, knowing that as we refresh others, we too will be refreshed. Filling the sink with dishes may seem like a never-ending task, but let us approach it with gratitude. As we clean the dishes, let us remember that our daily chores can be an act of service, an act of gratitude. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord, and not for men. Step number seven is unfold and fold. Unfolding the items from your eventual basket. I hope you didn't think I forgot about them. It's time to put them away into the designated places where they belong. Also, attend to your laundry by transferring it from the washing machine to the dryer or hanging it outside. And finally, folding and putting it away. Depending on where you started the laundry in the first step, make sure you move on to the next step. Colossians 3.14 encourages us and over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. The act of unfolding and folding our clothes represents our desire to clothe ourselves in Christ's love. As we care for our garments let us reflect on the virtues of compassion, humility, gentleness and mostly patience. Pray for God's guidance in cultivating these virtues in our daily lives so that our interactions with others may be marked by love. A tip I often hear from other homemakers is to pray over your children's clothing, your husband's clothing, your partner's clothing, your own clothing. This is an opportunity as you fold and put the clothes away to pray for the specific person in your life. So I invite you to take that opportunity today. Before we move on to step number eight, which is the final step, and that is to launder through. This includes complete any remaining tasks. Sometimes throughout this routine, I get to this immediately when I'm done. Other times this will be done in the evening after my youngest goes to bed. Continue to launder through your tasks. Start another load of laundry, put away the previous load, complete the dishes, tap any remaining loose ends to ensure a peaceful and organized home. Isaiah 118 promises, come now, let us settle the matter. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. 
Now that you have tackled the laundry, it's time to focus on completing any remaining homemaking tasks. Take a moment to assess what needs to be done and prioritize accordingly. Start by putting away any clean dishes that may be left on the counter or in the dishwasher. Return them to their proper places, ensuring that your kitchen is tidy and ready for use. Next, attend to the laundry that's been washed and dry. Fold or hang the clothes and put away in the designated spots. A clutter-free living space will contribute to a sense of peace and order. As you continue through your home, take a moment to wipe down any mirrors or surfaces that may need cleaning, clear away any dust or fingerprints, allowing your home to sparkle and shine. Lastly, I would consider leaving some toilet cleaner in the toilet overnight. This will help to ensure that your bathroom remains fresh and clean, ready for use the next day. Remember, the goal is to complete these remaining tasks with intention and a heart focus on creating a peaceful environment. By finishing up these homemaking tasks, you're actively contributing to the overall sense of order and tranquility in your home. As you completed tasks, take a moment and reflect on the progress you have made throughout the whole peaceful routine. Your commitment to creating a peaceful home is a reflection of your dedication to honouring God in all areas of your life. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the strength and motivation to complete the tasks before us. As we finish up the remaining homemaking tasks, May our hearts be filled with gratitude for the opportunity to create a peaceful environment for ourselves and our loved ones. Help us find joy in the process and to maintain a spirit of contentment in all that we do. I want to thank you for your commitment to cultivating a peaceful home today. May God's blessings continue to surround you as you embrace a lifestyle of order, tranquility and love. I pray you continue to seek the Lord's presence in your home, in your relationships and in your daily life. I pray you are granted the wisdom to discern what truly matters and the strength to let go of what hinders your peace. May your home be a reflection of your love and grace. In Jesus' name, Amen.